Elden Ring is one of the most epically massive games as of late, and as the DLC inches closer and closer, the hype will continue to grow. Now aside for a few release date playthroughs, I don't know much about what this game truly has to offer, so I decided to beat the game again, except this time, one area at a time, only using what I find within to beat each area. And in this episode, we're going to be taking on Mount Jelmer and the Volcano Manor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new episode of the Region Lock Elden Ring Challenge. This Before this episode, I was doing a bit of pondering what to do with my runes. Now, I am still pretty overleveled. I'm not as overleveled for this area as I was for the last area. However... I'm still pretty overloaded at 104, and I have 350,000 runes. Now, I made it through Altus Plateau without losing these runes, which was great. Do I expect to do that here? Absolutely not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dump all my runes into Endurance. It's going to be quality of life more than anything, and I think it will be all right i like i said i don't think i'm too too over leveled but yeah with that let's get in to the episode starting off in mount gelmer Gilmer. okay yeah whatever this is where my knowledge for the game takes a sharp nose dive i had a plan but no idea how to actually get to where i needed to be so we wandered around for a little bit, looting around, and then my curiosity got the best of me. Oh, cool, it's a bleed sword. Okay, well, that actually might help us a little bit more than... That actually would be really cool if I was able to do that. This is a terrible idea. God, I actually killed it with an unupgraded sword. I literally looted from a dead body right next to it. Oh, it's going to be a great day. On our expeditions, we came across a merchant, got some drip, and then continued to roam the land aimlessly. Oh, God, I know where this leads to. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. Wait a minute, this isn't where I'm supposed to be. Alright, let's backtrack a little bit. On our brief moment of genius, we come to realize we simply just made a wrong turn. But nonetheless, we arrive at the Jalmir Hero's Grave, which is home to everybody's favorite enemy, the Chariot. Now, luckily for us, the item that we covet is down at the very bottom of this hallway. But, with some patience, it truly isn't the most difficult thing in the world to navigate around these chariots. Yep, don't mind me, just literally rolling around in molten lava, taking the most minimal damage ever. <laughs> it's time to finger some people. Oh wow, look at that damage. <laughs> oh my god, that's the best, <laughs> that's hilarious, that's the best Ash Award in the entire game. Oh, hello there. <laughs> oh my god, that is strong. <laughs> you have been successfully fingered. Ooh, I wonder if that's the drip. We're gonna rock it for a little bit. I don't like the helmet at all, but... Well... Hold on. So on top of me getting lost on the way to this dungeon, it would only be fitting if I also got lost inside it. At the end here, you have the ability to jump onto this chariot. Does this serve any purpose? Well, as far as I'm aware, no, 
I assumed there's a way to like a secret passage so I can get to the lever to open the door at the end. However, there's another way you're supposed to open that door. I've been running around this place for literally 20 minutes thinking I had to ride the back of this thing to jump off somewhere and you just had to open oh my god I my head hurts oh my god <laughs> it's so oh god ricky don't die <laughs> it's so strong it's so strong <laughs> it's not okay it's not okay in the slightest with our weapon and armor in hand it's time to properly explore jelmer we started from the beginning fingering everything along the way a duck diversions anastasia some dogs we then teleported back over to the volcano cave to clear it out. Ah. Five lucky cave inhabitants have successfully been fingered. Ah, a bigger inhabitant. I must make my finger bigger to finger this one. Ooh. <laughs> So I got a giant finger and a little snake that pokes out. Ah, uh, this is the most suggestive build I've ever made. <laughs> oh shit, this one gave me a cannon? Whoa, what? I might actually have to look into that. That might be cool. <laughs> There was still a ton to do in this area, but again, I didn't quite know where to go. But there was one way I did know. That was the way through the Falling Star Beast. Now, this particular one has been edged into my brain for reasons you're about to see. Oh! <laughs> What? What? What the <laughs> fuck are you- Now, I was certain I was gonna be here for a long time. However, even though this finger is a gigantic meme, the power it possesses is absolutely ridiculous. Uh... You know what? I'm not even gonna complain because I climb up mountains with torrent. Carry on. I'm taking that. Honestly, I think that's a worthy take. Wait, what the fuck is he doing? What is he do- Oh, okay. This is the best place to be. Oh god, I'm crouched. Uh, okay, good. Good dodge. Just play smart, Ricky. Holy shit, just play smart. Just play smart. Just play smart. Let's go. Second try. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my god, I did it. I'm so happy. Oh god, I'm so happy. <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. I did it. Guys. I might be getting good at the game. Let's go! Oh my god, finally the map. I can actually kind of figure out where I'm going, maybe. Probably not still. This place is hard to navigate. Oh, I remember your little friend sucked me up earlier. I'm about to return the favor to you. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Hee <laughs> hee. One less warm face in the world is a better world to me.
Oh, that's cool. Let's just magically spawn out of the air. I actually jumped over that, I think. Maybe I really am getting good at this game. <laughs> he put his hands together like he was really going to knock my ass out. This finger literally is the best weapon I have used in the game to this point. So we finally came full circle at this bridge over by Anastasia. With the only path seemingly left was to enter the manor, but I knew there was more to Jelmer. There was a lower level, but again, I didn't know how to get there. I wandered around for about 15 minutes before I finally caved and looked up a guide. And once I found out you have to go through the Wadam ruins back in Altus Plateau, well, this is how I felt. Stupid, stupid, stupid. On the bright side, we have more loot to be grabbed, new caves to explore, and more bosses to finger. I'm watching him break dance. I'm like, oh hey, I wonder if I can tank that. <laughs> God, that's a great edit. I mean, yeah, I guess I had a hefty HP bar. I'm not gonna deny it. Alexander, you are a G. I've been Take it. <gasps> yes. 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 So at this point, we actually detoured from the lower level of Jelmer to pick up a new toy. Now, there are plenty of super cool weapons in this region, such as the Fallen Star Beast Jaw, the Inferno Crozier, even the Mantis Blade. However, there is one weapon we all saw and said i have to use this sometime so we head to the manor barge in like we're in a pokemon game and storm our way to the top floor to fight giza and yes i've been looking at the pronunciation on a lot of these things this episode but we attained the wheel from him or as i like to call it the pizza cutter <laughs> oh my god this is gonna be amazing I'm in love already. Oh my god, there's half his HP! Nope, oh, and there's all my HP. <laughs> oh my god, that is not okay. Oh no, I I'm happy that you broke the thing for me, but I don't need hugs. Please stop. 10,000 HP. Like look how little HP comes off when I'm doing like 500 damage to it. <laughs> this thing has at least 10k HP. That is absolutely absurd. Come back here. I have a pizza cutter too. Come back. Don't you run from me. Imagine just going about your everyday business and then this dude with a pot on his head and a giant pizza cutter just comes through and slaughters your entire village. So I got this from one of those marionette soldier guys and I don't like how it looks, but it goes perfect with the pizza cutter. So we're going to run with it. I love how with the strong attack, it starts spinning. It starts... How did I miss? 
miss? How did I just miss that? Oh my god. This weapon's awesome. <laughs> this weapon's actually awesome. But the boss isn't what we came here for. What we came here for is to talk to this gentleman here. Ah, there we go. And acquire Comet. Azur, Azu, Azur, Azu, do, 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 do. I don't know how to pronounce it, but we're gonna need that for later. It's not a good idea, but it's an idea. God, there's no hyper armor on that thing. This is gonna work. <laughs> It's the easiest game in the world. Ow. Man, I just wanted a clip. This might be the most hideously ugly drip you've ever seen in Elden Ring existence. This is the boss? Just two of these things? What the? Oh god, he just on me. <laughs> oh my god, that was the saddest excuse for a boss ever. There are much harder bosses in the game that give you less runes than that. That is a shame. With Mount Jelmer completed, it's time to finally begin exploring the manor. Now, before we begin, let's meet all the residents of this fine household. Leading the group, we got Tanith. Now, she does not like fingers, but she will eat just about anything. Do with that as you will. Next up is her faithful guard. He doesn't have a name, so let's just call him Jack. Jack isn't just any ordinary Crucible Knight. He's Tanith's Crucible Knight. Next up is Rhea. Now, we've helped her out in the past, but getting a close look at her, she kind of resembles a GTA 5 hooker. Lastly, Bernal. Now, this is another familiar face. Well, kind of. He got some new drip and now he changed up his whole personality to Mr. Calm, Cool, and Collected, but we'll give it to him. Also, Patches would have been here, but... I still regret nothing. Now, the manor does have a few secrets, like this Bloodhound Knight that's loot will help us immensely later, but more importantly, this secret wall here that you have to hit fit. Wait, what? They passed that out of the game months ago? Moving on! Volcano Manor works a little bit like the Dark Brotherhood from Skyrim. We have assassination contracts we must fulfill, starting with Istvan back at Limgrave. <laughs> I don't want to play anymore! Damn it! Oh my god, I got him! Let's go! Plus two axe never fails. Next up on the hit list is Mr. Riley the Idol. The triple poke. Not many can survive it. Lastly on our hit list is Mr. Juno Hoslow, a feared warrior we can't quite reach yet, but this doesn't mean our assassination streak is complete. You see, there is one more bit of unfinished business we unfortunately have to cater to, and that is gonna be putting our friend Blyde out of his misery.
Now, I was feeling down about putting one of my good friends to rest, so I decided to see Mr. Pope Turtle for a bit of renewed spirit. With our spirits renewed, it was finally time to begin our exploration of the town hidden inside the manor. Oh my god! Oh my god, I made that? What's up, dude? I don't think that's Alexander, but he's not hitting me, so he's good in my book. Hello, feather, fellow jar people. Oh, maybe that's why they're not nah, that can't be why they're not hitting me the jar isn't protecting me they just like me i like them too no way i make that no oh okay it does like no damage so we're just gonna walk through molten lava again Oh, a magma worm. No, I'm sorry, your tail away. <laughs> oh, this thing is so awesome. I unlocked all the shortcuts and a lot like the Fallen Star Beast on Jelmer, I had no idea where I was going, but I knew a fearsome foe waited on one path, so I decided just to send it. And I was wrecking the elegant warrior, like absolutely rinsing him, but in true Ricky fashion, I choked the attempt where I had 10 sips of flask left. Proceeded to die a few more times, including this absolutely rage inducing death. <laughs> You, uh, you know, I, I can't be mad. I can't be mad. I'm livid. <laughs> However, we eventually defeated him, but we still have yet the best, the true boss. My own stupidity. Uh. Oh god, okay. Let's run to the lava. He can't get us in the lava. Oh, this is not ideal. This is a very bad situation. I've got myself. Oh, yep, this is a predicament. <laughs> this is no bueno. That was the most majestic dodge I've ever seen in my life. Hello. Don't mind me. Everything staggers it out of it, which I get why, but it's so, like, defeating. That's gotta be the way to the boss. I don't want to be here yet, because I know there's one more thing we gotta do. There's probably, like, two or three more things we actually gotta do. But I know for certain there's one. I just don't know where it is. Oh. This might be the way. Yep, don't mind me just doing platforming with 300,000 runes. Not scared at all. I bet that. Up. Oh. <laughs> huh? Oh, what the f. Y'all saw that, right? My game froze. <laughs> what? All right, the pressure is on. Okay, I see what killed me. <laughs> Ooh. No, no, no. Oh, I see. You want seconds. Ah, yes. Let's lose half our HP into a... Oh, my. Oh, God. Oh, geez. 
Start with the lawnmower. Oh, I thought spinning around would work. Why do they just swarm me? It's so terrifying. You're dead. You're dead. You are dead. You are dead. Let go. Oh my god, let go of me. Let go of me. Get up, get up, get up, get up. I think that's the second time that's happened this episode. Or maybe it was last episode where something grabbed me after it died and it just kept on doing its sucky suck grab thing. That's a really bad way to explain it. I don't know what this is either, but I'm sure it's important. There's no way this is actually Volcano Manor. I'm gonna be so absolutely lit. This is Volcano Manor. Ah, oh, shit. That looks like somewhere I haven't... Oh, no. Oh, God. I'm getting wrecked. Okay, there's stuff over there. That's where I need to be. We're making progress. Oh, my God. Wait, is it dead? It's not dead. Yes! Yes! This is what I've always wanted! Yes! Let's go! I always just wanted to do that! I'm so happy. I can't believe one of my least favorite, most feared enemies in the entire game just brought me such joy. Oh wow, I should have gotten that a lot earlier. Oh my god, that gives me like... 250 HP I'm still gonna find a way to die but oh no this is not good oh this is very good <laughs> wonderful beautiful that was actually remarkable oh neat Where is this? Oh, we're on the opposite side of where I wanted to be. Now, if you're wondering for the useful feature of the Bloodhound Claws I was alluding to earlier, this is it. This is literally it, and this is the most helpful thing in the game. The goal now was the Subterranean Inquisition Chamber. Jeez, what a mouthful. Anyway, I again had to cave and look up a guide. Stupid, stupid. You know what? No, I'm not even gonna give myself shit for this one because how the hell was I supposed to figure this out? Ah, oh, a test dummy. I'm so scared. Ah, I, I, <laughs> that works so nice. I'm so happy. We dive deeper and deeper, finally reaching our destination. So after breaking through the floor and picking up all this dank grass, we pass through the fog and the star in our new film, Two Adductor Virgins, One Pizza Cutter, an unrated film containing much gore and sexual content. Viewer discretion is advised. However, with that completed, we have just one more thing to take care of, the big boss of the area. But for that, we must prepare ourselves. First, I wanted to unlock the bonfire. This seemed like the simplest, easiest, and most effective thing to start out with. Secondly, I wanted to go die in the most horrifying way possible for absolutely no reason. This is actually terrifying. Thirdly, we had to go pick up some new toys. <laughs> There's another one! Jeez, those things are not rare at all, are they? <laughs> but I think it's fitting <laughs> that we retired the jarhead for the only thing <laughs> that is worthy. Lastly, we're gonna go respec, and yep, we're going for the 60 intelligence, and you know exactly where this is going.
Now that we are prepared, let's talk about the boss, the God Devouring Serpent, straight from Yu-Gi-Oh. This is a gimmick boss, the best gimmick boss from Soph has made, in my opinion. The gimmick revolves around this weapon, the Serpent Hunter Spear, a pretty handy weapon nonetheless. But in this boss room, you turn into Aang from Avatar, and you have the winds of the gods fueling your strikes. This is the phase of the game where bosses start getting transformations and resetting their health bars. This guy in particular faked out the Orochimaru entrance and just literally turned his head to reveal himself. And then he pulled the Orochimaru entrance by pulling the sword out of the snake's mouth. Kind of cool. Phase 2 is where this boss fight really picks up. As the fight progresses, you'll notice it gets a little cloudy, you could say. Well, this is how I interpret Hell to be. Because what crazed maniac over at FromSoft thought this was a good idea? Because that man deserves a raise. This is absolutely chaotic, horrifying, and punishing. And I love every single second of it. For the first time in quite a while, we actually struggled with a boss. There's so much going on! We had an attempt early on that could have been it, but as you can imagine, I was trying to end this with Common Azur. And I jumped the gun slightly. However, because of this blunder, I can bring attention to a detail I overlooked. Now, the Physic tier we got earlier in the region is the Cerulean Hidden Tier, which grants us an infinite amount of MP for a small period. This tier is specifically paired with Common Azur in a lot of builds, especially on release date. This was overpowered. The tier I had equipped to my Physic at the time was the Cerulean Crystal tier. And that one is kind of useless to us. So normally I would punish myself for breaking the rules, but I think dying the next 10 attempts and getting absolutely ass blasted by this hell simulator is punishment enough. <laughs> I'm so sad! <sighs> After about an hour of suffering, it's finally time to unveil why I respect my build and made such a big deal about Comet Azur. As I'm sure most of you have heard, the creator of Dragon Ball, Akira Toriyama, passed away earlier this month. And I can go on and on about how DBZ is my favorite anime of all time, how Akira will never be forgotten, and all that he's done for the community. But I thought it'd be a really cool idea to just pay tribute to the legend by defeating this boss in a way that would make him proud. This is my chance. Kame, Kame, ha! Let's go! Oh my God, that took so long. It's done. It's finally done. Remember when I said she'll eat anything? I meant anything. Wait, are you for real right now? Is she Kamehameha resistant? What the fuck is going on? Oh, this is not the course of events I thought was gonna- Oh god, he's behind me! Jack, I'm sorry! When in doubt, finger them out. Okay, so either I'm not using the spell right, or this shit got nerfed into the ground. Jack, I loved you, dude. But you picked hoes before bros. And with all of that, we have finished up the manor and the entirety of this region. Pretty smooth episode if I do say so myself. Next time, however, we will be returning to our pursuit of the Erd Tree and taking on the Royal Capital. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.